Hello everyone and welcome to Word on the Street. My name is Cyril the Summers McGee and I'm the founder and CEO of Workplace Change. Word on the Street is where we talk about current events matters and I give you my perspective on what's going on. So let's get to it. CEOs and employees alike are concerned about the fact that a recession may be on its way. We've got politicos this political season talking about recession's not happening, right? They want us to rest assured, but most people aren't believing it. I just cited the KPMG study that where 90% of executives or CEOs believe that a recession is underway. We're watching layoffs happen from the metaverse, which is also known as Facebook for us old timers, to other technical organizations where they are laying off 10%, 20%, 30% in anticipation of a contraction in our economy. Things are happening all around us, but I want you to think about this as you prepare for a recession, if and when it does occur. And by the way, they, they happen, you know, every decade or so we get a recession. It comes and it goes away. So it's nothing that we should be just completely, you know, reactionary about. When you're thinking about the recession, I want you to think about retaining the workforce first, right? Because the way you get out of a recession and become profitable on the heels of a recession is that you've got hardworking, loyal, supported, excited, energized people who are fueling your company, okay? So during this kind of um, recession or pre-recession phase, you should think about how to invest in some of your highest performers and hardest workers throughout your organization many of whom are overlooked. Quite frankly, we spend the majority of our time in the workplace focused on those who are, you know, troublesome when we are focusing on our workforce or kind of celebrating the masses. But our high flyers oftentimes don't get as much time and attention as they deserve to become even stronger and better contributors inside your ecosystem. So take this opportunity, take this call to action to say, how can I invest in those who supercharge my organization every month every year, every decade, right? And invest in them. But if you do have to do reductions in force as a result of a, of, of a recession, I want you to think about it this way, okay? When you do your reductions in force, do not take a peanut butter approach, right? Where you spread the percentage of cuts across all the teams. That is not a smart strategy to deploy, okay? Number one, because I'll just speak self selfishly for human resources. HR is, res is responsible for administering the layoffs and making sure that you hire up. So if you actually cut HR before or during the cuts, then you are going to directly impact your ability to effectively move forward a reduction in force in a way that is humane and kind to individuals. All right. But beyond that, there are certain departments that perhaps aren't going to be as busy when you do consider doing a reduction in force. And so there may be or there should be some business components to how it is you conduct that reduction in force. You should also think about making sure your performance evaluations are tip top, okay? We all know that we will inflate those performance, in, uh, those performance evaluations, right? Where everybody gets a perfect score, mostly because our uh, bonuses or compensation increases are tethered to our actual performance or merit scores, right? So let's say you get you score um, 80% uh, in your performance evaluation out of 100%, and then you get 80% of your bonus and or your merit increase. Your eligibility is at the 80% uh, threshold. Well, most managers don't want you to not get your full payout because they scored you more, more harshly. So that's something to consider as you're, as you're reviewing your performance system, your performance assessments. But also know this, when you're doing a reduction in force, if you have to do that, you should also think about who are your highest performers, right? Who are your lowest performers? Who are the people who have been working at 100% at that, you know, 90% and rewarding those individuals who kind of live, leave it all on the gridiron, okay? You also need to make sure you deploy an equity uh, strategy. What I do know as a human resources practitioner who has always centered my HR work in diversity, equity, and inclusion, what I know is that oftentimes people of color, uh, non-binary folks, uh, uh, folks with disabilities get scored more 
aggressively. They get they are, You're a harder scorer. We tend to be harder scorers for those who are historically underrepresented. So I want to make sure that you're doing a calibration, literally sitting down with the other managers in a department, in a team, and identifying where are all of your perfect scores, all of your, you know, 90 percentile, 80 percentile, 70 percentile. And then look at that, that hierarchy through race, through gender, through tenure, through uh, ability, disability um, um, standpoint, through, through LGBTQI plus information if you have it. And make sure that you don't have 80% of your people of color located in your, you know, 20th percentile, 30th percentile, right? You've got to actually do the work to make sure that it's equitable. So that's what I would ch charge you with. As we brace for impact, if a recession does come, I'm hopeful that it, that it doesn't, or if it does, it's really minor. And you're thinking about reductions in force, right? First, pause and figure out if you can retain those staff as best as possible for as long as humanly possible. And then second, if you do move forward with the reduction in force, make sure it's done equitably, make sure it's done humanely, and make sure it's done in a very thoughtful, business-centric manner, all right? Now, if you do have questions, make sure you reach out to Workplace Change. We can help you along the way. But in the meantime, I think we're all going to be fine. We're all going to make it through yet one more challenging moment in this wild ride we've been on for the past three or so years. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Word on the Street.